My name is Cassie, and I have taught a few things with the related community, and I'm really excited to be here with you in my home uh, while we're all coming together to try and cook a little more and feed ourselves well and keep ourselves occupied. So we are going to explore mushrooms today. Mushrooms are awesome. Why? Because they're antimicrobial, uh, which means they're antibacterial. They have a lot of different mineral compounds, not a lot of vitamins, but a lot of minerals. Uh, there are a lot of anti-cancer properties. Um, we can send you links to the studies that, that uh, uh, discuss this. And they're also super versatile, right? So some mushrooms have a ton of flavor, and then some mushrooms like the white button mushroom, don't have a lot of flavor. They're pretty neutral. So they'll take on the flavor that you add to it, which is great in our case, because we're gonna make two different things. Longevity mushroom toast, and that's making a mushroom gravy on the stovetop in a cast iron pan. So it's gonna have a little bit of liquid that you spoon on to your sourdough, Ezekiel, gluten-free bread, whatever, what have you. Um, and it will soak in. And then that also could be used for something else like beef stroganoff um, or beef free stroganoff. And then we're also going to make roasted vinegar mushrooms with another variety of mushrooms. These are going to go in the oven, either in a cast iron pan or on a sheet tray or in I have this shallow Le Creuset. And the roasted vinegar mushrooms are punchy because we're using two different kinds of vinegar, sherry vinegar and balsamic vinegar, both using thyme as an aromatic, both using garlic. This is a punchier flavor and they're gonna get pretty caramelized in the oven and they're great on toast still. Uh, they're also really delicious if you take romaine lettuce or another favorite lettuce of yours. I like romaine spears that I throw either on the grill or underneath my broiler and char them. And then I'll make either a vegetarian or a meat or a seafood salad with roasted vinegar mushrooms because they're punchy. They're also delicious in something like rice noodles where you add two tablespoons peanut butter and you add your vinegary mushrooms. So we're just gonna play with the two flavors of a gravy, cast iron gravy with mushrooms and then also a roasted vinegar mushroom. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna talk about our ingredients. So, so I have my notes here. So we wanna talk about all of the mushrooms that we have. So I have a variety of mushrooms here today. And I pre-cleaned a bunch of them. If you didn't clean, no worries, take your time, it's all good. So we have, these are what big portobello mushrooms are, okay? Those big mushroom caps. And in the old school veggie burger days, these are the ones that were grilled and then put in between the bun. That's still delicious, by the way. Um, you just don't see portobello mushroom sandwiches as often anymore because we have the Beyond Meat burgers. Uh, and then we also have baby bella or cremini mushrooms. So those are just baby portobello mushrooms. They look like this. These, these ones are dirty. Okay. Then I also have white button mushrooms that I just showed you before. So those are like the standard mushroom. I call it a filler mushroom. I use them. They don't have a lot of flavor. They definitely bulk things up. Uh, and I'm a pretty big fan of them. Then these are shiitake mushrooms. So shiitake mushrooms, I find them to be a little bit more beautiful because they're kind of wacky and wild in their growth and they have usually a crooked stem. And these have quite a bit of flavor in them. So they're, and they're more expensive as well. So these are great to add depth of flavor. There are a variety of mushrooms that are available at the store. Do not go picking your own mushrooms. I think everybody tells you that. We all live in a city though, so I don't think that you're foraging. Um, but there are such things as poisonous mushrooms. So make sure you're getting it from a reputable forager or a store like Citarella or Italy. Um, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, you can get them in the plastic containers with the, the cling film on them. So we have a variety of mushrooms and how do we clean them? If you're making a ton of mushrooms, you can fill your sink with cold water, dump them in and shake them really quickly and then take to get the dirt off and then take them out and put them on a towel immediately. But you want to be quick. Why? Because mushrooms are sponges. So they're sponges that pull in flavor and water doesn't have a lot of flavor. But a tiny vegetable stock definitely does, or sherry vinegar definitely has a lot of flavor. So 
the best thing that you can do is if you take your mushrooms and put them in front of you, these ones are nice and dirty. The best thing to do, unless you have a ton of mushrooms to clean, is to take a damp towel, okay? And then we're just gonna brush off the dirt, just like so. That's it. Make sure you do clean your mushrooms because you don't want to eat dirt. Like you don't eat sand. It's like when you're eating a lettuce that hasn't been cleaned properly. It is not delicious. So you're just going to brush away. You could sit on a stool. But you just want to rub the dirt off. Okay? All clean. Now, there's always a question about stems. What do I do with the stems? Do I get rid of the stems? Do I keep the stems? Well, you definitely, when you buy these in a container, the stems are fine, right? You could trim a little bit off if you wanted to, but the stems are shortened, um, they're cleaned because you clean them, and they're tender enough, right? But when you think about a shiitake mushroom, which if you have the shiitake and the stem looks like this, the stem is very tough, okay? It in the oven will become chewy and unpleasant. So for the shiitakes, you wanna take the stems off. But I recommend saving them if you're gonna make vegetable stock. And you're saying to me, when am I gonna make vegetable stock? Well, you're home. So you might be making chicken soup. We can send you a recipe for it if you want to. Um, and if you're making chicken soup, you're making stock. So save them because mushroom water is a delightful thing to make risotto, which I have some risotto rice over there. So I'm just taking the shiitakes and the rest I have trimmed here. And I'm just gonna take the stems off and save them. Is everybody following? Now, first things first, we have aromatics, garlic and shallots. For the roasted vinegar mushrooms, we're just gonna use one clove of garlic. You can up it if you want, if you really love garlic. For the mushroom gravy, we're gonna use half a clove. I might even just use a whole clove today. I'm following the recipe from my book clean enough, but always feel free to improvise. Why? Because this is something that is a recipe-free recipe. Um, if you follow the recipe to a T, it will come out great. If you don't follow the recipe to a T and you say, hmm, I want a little more lemon or I want a little more garlic and onion, it's still going to be delicious. So you're cooking to your liking but you're, you're learning the principles of cooking in a cast iron skillet and roasting vinegar mushrooms in the oven. So we have garlic as an aromatic. Then we also have shallot. So if you weren't able to get shallot from the store, whether you went to the store and got a delivery, no problem. Hopefully you have a hunk of onion. If you don't have a hunk of onion, it's also gonna be okay. So this is what a shallot looks like, okay? These are quite large. Now, shallot has an oniony garlic flavor, so two for one. Uh, they are delicious caramelized, delicious roasted, and these are going to go into our longevity mushroom toast, so into the mushroom gravy. You just want to get your aromatics ready, even though you could start to finish one of the recipes. So I'm just going to slice the shallots thin. And while I'm slicing the shallots thin, I want to talk a little bit about a cast iron skillet. So maybe you have a cast iron. Sometimes they come in like different bulbs like that. See, there's a separation of paper. I need a skin, you just want to pull that off. Now, cast iron skillet, which I have over here, they should be pretty inexpensive. 15 bucks, don't pay more than 25, unless you get the Le Creuset one, which has the colored enamel bottom. That one might be a little bit more. They're great. Uh, but what I'm saying is that you can get them for nothing and have them for a lifetime. I've been asked, I think even by Amy, um, you know, having problems with my cast iron skillet, it keeps getting rusted, I've seasoned it, keep on seasoning it. So how do you season it? You wanna put some oil in there and rub it around and then bake it in the oven and then keep rubbing it. Now, you're not supposed to put water in your cast iron skillet, but the reality is, is sometimes I need to clean it. And maybe it's unorthodox, but I do it anyways. And if I get rust, I just add more oil and then I wipe it out. It usually takes a hunk of paper towels or you can use 
This is a green one, but there's a million colors of bamboo cloth is a great thing because then you can just rinse it out and throw it in the washer. I clean all day long because I cook a lot in here. So I prefer to not go through rolls and rolls of paper towel, rather use the bamboo cloth. So we're just slicing these nice and paper thin. What's paper thin? Keep your fingers in. Just like so. You don't need to use a mandolin. If you really want to get the mandolin out and do that, go for it. Okay. And so we're not putting the shallots into the roasted vinegar mushrooms, but we could if we wanted to. It's not wrong to, okay? And then we've got some garlic. How's everybody doing? Do you have any questions? So far, good. This is great. So if you have questions, uh, just feel free to throw them in the chat, and then my awesome sidekick will shout them out to me. And the only reason being, it's not that I don't want to chat with you, we'll chat after too, it's just that it will switch the video. And then you won't get to see me chopping garlic, which I'm going to smell like garlic for days. All right, so one butter. question we yes. have is, what's the best local store for mushrooms? Well, I really love Italy. Um, I'm not sure where everybody is in New York in your buildings, um, but there's Italy in Flatiron, and then there's Italy that is uh, Tribeca. Why do I love Italy? Because Baldor Specialty Produce runs their produce. So it's not that it's, you know, a packaged product that's super, like it, everything's cling filmed. Italy is run by a produce, specialty produce that serves all the restaurants in New York that we really want to support. Um, so Baldor is actually doing home delivery orders now if you spend $250. Just look at the pack sizes because they usually serve restaurants for delivery and then they run the produce at Italy. So that's long-winded. They have an amazing selection of mushrooms. The green markets usually have mushroom for there. Um, it's also a great place to get them. And citarellas. So citarella, uh, their variety of mushrooms vary, um, obviously very seasonally driven, and then depending on which citarella you go to, so if you're down on Sixth Avenue or if you're up in Hudson Yards, they're going to cater to what people tend to be buying. So make a request um, if you're in there and you're like, oh my gosh, I really want um, shiitakes because I keep on using them and I don't see them. They'll probably listen um, because they're there to help you cook at home. So I hope that helps, but again, uh, for things like chicories, which are those fancy lettuces and mushrooms, I'm a huge fan of Italy. All right, the other aromatics are thyme. Sorry, Cassie, we have one more yeah. question. Yeah, is, there, are, is there a season that's best for mushrooms? Yeah, so uh, mushrooms actually have seasons. So when you think about porcini mushrooms and our darling Tuscany, uh, so porcinis have a very distinct flavor and they're often put in pasta with green herbs. Um, in Italy, it's a native herb. Here, we probably just use parsley. And you see porcini's dry a lot. Actually, I'm gonna pause and show you what they look like dry. Let's see. Don't mind my produce bag. So porcini's are dried at the store, as are morels. Morels come in the spring, porcini in the summer, and they are uh, uh, a, more, what's the word, um, you know, they're rare um, and they have a shorter season. So that's why you often also find them dry. So actually these are morels, not porcinis. No, I have porcinis. Um, and I keep them and I make stocks out of these just like I would the shiitake stems if I'm making a risotto or something else. I'm not always making risotto, um, but even if I'm making veg, and I'll throw a little mushroom stock in there. Um, white button mushrooms all year round. Uh, portobellos and baby portobellos, they're cultivated all year round. Chanterelles come in the spring. Those are the ones that are orange that always pop up on the menus uh, in late spring and summer. And they're very delicious. They have a ton of flavor like apricot. Uh, and that's why they're a little bit more expensive. So I hope that helps answer the question. So we have time. You can be lazy about this and you can just throw the time in there because the time, the little leaves will just fall off. So we'll do it one of two ways. In the oven for the roasted vinegar mushrooms and I wanna get in there soon so I better stop talking. We'll just throw these in like that. And then for the mushroom gravy, it's great 
to strip the stem. You never want to eat the stem for time because it's very woody. Uh, it's not like a basil leaf that you get a bit of stem. You can eat that, it's fine. Uh, the flavor is in the leaf. But for this, you want to strip it. So the best way to do it is hold it and then go the other direction. So the leaves are going up like this and you just want to hold and pull down, okay? And that will strip the leaves. What do you do with the stems if you're really into using everything that you've got? Well, they still have a lot of flavor. So if you're making that mushroom stem stock, throw the thyme in there. I think at the end of all of this, we should buy a chicken so that we can roast it and make soup and use the mushrooms and we'll all be happy. So you need a tablespoon plus a teaspoon, but you just need a small handful for the gravy. All right, let's get this going. So we've got our aromatics. We have garlic, shallots, thyme, delicious. We'll put a little bit of chili flake into our mushroom gravy, but we won't put it in the vinegar mushrooms. So we wanna have the base here. We're gonna do a clove of garlic for the roasted vinegar mushrooms into here. I'm gonna add a little bit of shallot in there, even though it's not in the recipe. It's cool. And I'm gonna throw the thyme, okay? Then I'm gonna add some Himalayan pink salt, some Malden flaky salt. I have Redmond real salt. Use good salt, why? Because if it's unrefined, it still has the minerals and it helps your body process it. Also, it tastes better, okay? If you use really fine salt versus flaky salt, if the measurement says flaky salt and you're using finer salt, use a little less. Why? Just volume wise, right? If you're doing a teaspoon, not a weight. So then we have black pepper in here. And then we are going to put a little bit of red pepper flakes. So if you have red pepper flakes that you can shake, cool. I happen to have a chili plant. And so I'm just going to take one. If you're getting it on your fingers though, this is all that, this is just roasted. These are red pepper flakes, but not broken. Uh, if you're getting it on your finger, please do not touch your eyes. I have fallen for this myself many times. So this has the capsicum oils that make it nice and spicy and flavorful. Your eyes don't like them. So if you want to wear gloves, I think you have gloves at home at this point, do that. All right, now I'm gonna add a third of a cup of aged balsamic vinegar. This is aged balsamic vinegar that I got at Whole Foods. If you want to use, aged balsamic vinegar has a lot more flavor than just like the 365 brand balsamic. You can also use that. Use what you have in your cupboard. It's fine. Um, so it's a little bit thicker, uh, but it's not as thick as this. So I have this stuff that I like to finish things with. Uh, it's very, very, very thick and syrupy. Uh, the price range for balsamic is incredible. Buy something that you like. Um, you only live once, so get a good balsamic, but you don't need to get the super thick syrup for this because it's gonna evaporate in the oven. All right, so you need a third of a cup of this. A third of a cup? It's a half, so I'm gonna just eye it. And then you need two tablespoons. This bowl looks really pretty. I hope everybody's bowl at home looks pretty. Smells very good in here already. And then you need two tablespoons of sherry vinegar. If you don't have sherry vinegar, you use red wine vinegar or something else. The only thing I always recommend, two tablespoons. I always recommend just don't use white distilled vinegar. That's like a great for cleaning. So if you're cleaning a lot right now at home, throw a lemon rind and white distilled vinegar and you can scrub things down. But it's just not delicious. So there's no need to eat it. So we're just gonna use our hands. And then I have a variety of mushrooms here. So I have two and a half cups of baby portobello's, two and a half cups of white button mushrooms, and I have a cup of shiitakes. Do I chop them? Do I slice them? I would hack at them, okay? I wouldn't necessarily cut them. So something that's big like this, we can just take it, we can just do it in half, okay? If it's even wider, do it into thirds. If it's little, leave it whole. But this should just be quick, okay? If you slice it like this, it's fine. It's just gonna roast really quickly, much faster than 40 minutes. And I kind of like to end up 
with hunks of mushrooms that I can do something with and they have, you know, some weight to them. And that also helps out if you're eating more vegetarian meals, when you have a hunk of a mushroom versus you know, a thin slice, you get a little bit more out of the bite. All right. Any more questions? Have we d dug into cocktail hour yet? It's five o'clock, I guess. Yes, you could. A lot of my friends. Recommend any specific wines to pair with mushrooms? Yeah. So you know, funny. Often when you're when you're having vegetables, they recommend white wine. But the beauty of a mushroom is mushrooms are hardy and they're earthy, right? We just cleaned all the dirt off of the mushrooms, and they are hearty. So you can do red wines. Uh, Pinot would be a lighter red wine. Um, I love a Nebbiolo with it. I think I've told Amy before that I love Nebbiolo. So I love Nebbiolo. Uh, it's from the northern region, the Piedmont region of Italy, and it has a lot of black pepper, and it's a medium body. You know, do you want to have a bottle of Barolo with mushrooms? If you're doing some sort of slow roasted beef and then you fold in the mushroom gravy, yes, you want a Barolo. Um, if you just want to enjoy the Barolo, go for it. But yeah, I would say like a medium body wine. I have here this that would be awesome with it. This is a, I wonder if you guys just all saw my fridge. Hopefully it was presentable. Um, this is an Oregon Pinot Noir. It's a natural wine. Uh, this is from the Willamette Valley, and it is a great wine. It's a, it's a pretty light Pinot, um, easy drinking, natural wine. So a natural wine means that it hasn't had yeast added to it to help the fermentation, and it's not messed with in the processing quite as much. All right, so we're just gonna take this and we're gonna use our hands and massage. And then we want to get these in a pan and into the oven. If you're afraid of using your hands, you can use spoons. It's just much easier to use your hands. And I just wash them and I'll continue to wash them and I'm serving myself. If I was in a restaurant, I would not be doing this. So don't fret. It's just much, much, much easier. So they're soaking up all of this flavor. I think I forgot something. I did, I forgot olive oil. So we just need a tablespoon of olive oil just to coat it. It helps caramelize. You can always just add it like that. It helps caramelize the mushrooms. If you want more oil, great. Um, that's fine. Don't, don't use more than a quarter cup though or else you'll have really greasy mushrooms and that's not more delicious. But I like to keep things light. Okay. So we're gonna take this, and I'm gonna just throw it in this pan. If you have a sheet tray, that's great too. It's gonna to go into our oven, we're gonna forget about it, and get going on that mushroom gravy. Okay, into the oven. I'm just gonna rinse my hands off. Okay. And you don't really, you don't need to set a timer unless you're somebody that tends to burn things all the time, 30 to 40 minutes. If you want to kick up, kick up, kick up to 425, excuse me, you're welcome to do that. Um, just watch it so they don't burn. But I've been known to throw things up to 425 out of slight impatience or time crunch. We're going to move on to... Do yeah. you ex do you recommend um, you know having a different olive oil for cooking versus finishing things off? It's a really great question. So extra virgin olive oil is the only olive oil that you should be buying. So it used to be that they would just say olive oil for cooking um, and then use extra virgin olive oil for finishing. But really, you only really want extra virgin olive oil because you want to put high quality oil that's not like blended and you don't want to. Mix you don't know what's in it. That's the only reason you want to know what you're putting in your body. Um, but there's different varieties of extra virgin olive oil. So this is 365 extra virgin olive oil. I cook with this. 
Um, it's probably 15 bucks a bottle and it's pretty easy going, okay? The flavor is super neutral, but I know um, because I've researched it online that this is actually extra virgin olive oil and it's not baked out. Why am I saying that? Just the, num the amount of um, extra virgin olive oil that's exported to the United States isn't actually all extra virgin because they can't grow that much, right? That's like way too much olive oil, way too many brands. Then I'll, I'm gonna show you this. Let's see, I think I have it in my space. So this is another extra virgin olive oil, but this is probably a $40 container, right? And it's 250 grams. Okay, 250 mils rather. Uh, this has a lot of flavor. So think about wine. An easy drinking Pinot that's maybe $15 a bottle versus a really um, rich Barolo. So this is peppery, it has a lot of layers of flavor, and I'm not against cooking with this, but I'll usually make salad dressings or finish things with this olive oil. Um, so I hope that answers the question. It used extra virgin no matter what, um, but if it's a $40 bottle, um, which is very easy to find for, that's not even technically that expensive for olive oil and it has a ton of depth of flavor, you might want to do more raw applications with it. And then if you're cooking, just buy a decent extra virgin olive oil. Um, and then don't use junk oil. Um, you know, you can use grapeseed oil that doesn't have flavor. Um, avocado oil is a great oil. Walnut oil has flavor, but it's great oil for you. Try not to use vegetable oil. Um, it's, it, your body doesn't really like it. Um, and there's so much. Uh, alternative and healthy oils available. So I hope that answers the question. All right, we're gonna move on to the longevity mushroom toast. And we're gonna take these mushrooms and we're gonna do the same thing. Let's just take a minute and cut them into pieces. These, maybe I cut them a little smaller. So I did that one into quarters. I'm gonna take the buttons, I'm just gonna half them. And we're going to turn on our cast iron skillet. And if you don't have a cast iron skillet, you can use a saute pan. Like so. This is like an old school vintage one, but you can use an olive clad pan. Uh, whatever you have that has the straight sides, that's fine. Um, I just like the cast iron. I like the way things cook in there. I want to cook my peanut butter over here. And then we're going to add a tablespoon of oil. We're gonna let it get warm while I'm hacking up these mushrooms. And we're gonna saute on medium, the shallots and the garlic. You don't wanna burn the garlic. So if you've ever thrown garlic into a super hot pan and you didn't like your meal, it's probably because it became a little bitter. So just be a little bit more gentle on the garlic. If you're, if you're sauteing, let's say bok choy, Bok choy is usually available at the store and it's a quick and easy dinner. And you put it in a really hot, screaming hot pan and it usually says not, um, uh, not olive oil. It says, you know, maybe like a grapeseed oil because it's a higher smoke point. I would throw the garlic in, not in the beginning, okay? Because you're most likely going to burn it. I would throw it in like with the vegetables so it has a chance to add the flavor to everything. And not turn bitter. All right, so we're gonna take the shallots and the garlic. We're gonna go into the pan. I have a little bit of the paper. Don't judge yourself, just pull it out. And we're just gonna add, soften this basically for one minute. So what do you wanna use for this? You could use a heat proof spatula. You could use a metal spoon. This is not a non-stick, it is non-stick, but it's not a non-stick skillet, so you're, you're welcome to use a metal implement. You can use a wooden spoon, which I will use. And we're just going to soften this up. It's gonna flavor the pan. And again, this is another case. If you wanna add more than a tablespoon of olive oil, by all means, just don't use more than three tablespoons of olive oil or else you'll have oily, you don't want an oily gravy. Not delicious. And then we're gonna take these mushrooms, 
So we've got here four cups of mushrooms mixed. We're just going to throw them in. And we're going to throw in the thyme, which is a tablespoon, a teaspoon, like a small handful of thyme. See how I sh show you how much? About that much. Thyme loves gravy. It loves slow ro roasted things. So if you want that kind of um, comforting feeling in your food, whether it's scrambled eggs or a quick bowl of soup, or honestly a chicken soup that you buy from the store and you want to dress up, just have some time in it with potatoes, that kind of stuff. It just becomes very comforting. That's the connotation with the herb. All right, and then I'm going to take these. And we're going to just saute them. I'm going to season it with some salt and pepper. You can be generous with your pepper. Um, because mushrooms like pepper. Do we have any questions? All right. So we're just gonna let these go. We're gonna let them go to add some flavor. I'm gonna clean up my board. I don't want to fake cook here where I just kind of like throw stuff you don't really see. Uh, I don't have a clean crew. For yeah. the people that uh, join us a little bit later, can you talk about the health benefits of mushrooms? Sure. So uh, mushrooms are known to be antimicrobial. So that means that they're antibacterial. It's a great thing right now. I think I'm stepping on a mushroom down there, sorry. Um, they're also full of lots of minerals, not a lot of vitamins. So vitamins would be vitamin A, vitamin E, uh, vitamin K, uh, vitamin C, that's citrus, um, minerals. So minerals that are necessary for your cells to function. They're also known to have a lot of anti-cancer properties. Um, there are studies that show that it reduces your risk of breast cancer um, by 60%. There are studies that we can link up um, so that everybody can have all the data. And that is one of the great benefits of mushrooms. They're also sponges, right? So you can get a very neutral flavored mushroom or a mushroom with a lot of flavor and add a lot of flavor to it like we're doing right now. So if you're in your house, you're probably smelling the vinegar in the oven. You're smelling the caramelization happen over here. And you can make them taste however you want. And they're a great way to eat a vegetarian meal, but they're also great with meats. Um, so have it either way. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of take the pan I'll move it over here. My burner is bigger on that side, so let's see. I'm just going to do this, okay? Just going to kind of push it. And it seems like it's really full, but they're going to cook down. I'm going to move my yogurt container so I don't cook it. All right, and while these are cooking, we're going to talk about the toast. So we're making longevity mushroom toast, but you can also take this gravy and do other things with it that I'll discuss, okay? So let's first talk about the toast. So whatever you have in your house, if you've been making bread, awesome. Uh, there's Mark Fitman's on New York Times cooking no need bread that uses yeast. Um, I have a mother, actually I have two mothers. They are, this is live yeast, right? Uh, it's called the starter. It's sour. So I have two of these I'm making bread because I have more time at home right now. This is Ezekiel bread. So if you've ever had Ezekiel bread, it's a sprouted grain, which means it's easier to digest, right? Sometimes grains are really hard to digest. You could also just buy a sourdough from the store. I like Red Alone Bakery. Um, I like She Wolf Bakery. And if you're anywhere near the Union Square Green Market, it's still open. Um, or whenever places reopen. Um, I think that Lost Bread Co. out of Philadelphia is awesome. Gluten free. Welcome to use gluten free bread. Just make sure you get one that you like. Um, and I find that when I have gluten free bread, it's much better when it's toasted. We're going to always toast this regardless. So, we have one question. Someone asked, how do we know if the heat is too high on the pan? So for this, you want a pretty high heat. So you want to go medium to pretty high um, because you want the color. 
Um, because you've added all of the mushrooms in, you're not gonna end up burning your garlic. So just have it like a little bit down. My, my heat's pretty high over here. I'm actually, maybe I'll just move this camera. You can see? My heat's yeah, pretty great. high, okay? And I'm just kind of moving around, I can smell it. But mushrooms, you wanna, you wanna cook them. So that's a great question. And they're already starting to cook down quite a bit. I'm gonna turn this a bit while we're over here. See how it's flattened a bit? All right, so back to the bread. So we have these bread. I'm gonna do a Z-heel. Um, you can cut them thick, you can cut them thin. This came pre-sliced. Um, don't be too stressed, just do something that you like. And you wanna toast it. Um, I like to toast it. I'm just shaking my mushrooms down here. They smell awesome. I usually toast under a broiler. Um, you can also just toast in a cast iron skillet, like so. You can also toast in a toaster oven if you have a toaster oven at your house. I actually don't have a toaster oven um, because I use my broiler a lot. And it's just not another thing I want on my counter. So we'll just turn this on and toast up here. And then you also need labne. So labne, what is labne? It is just strained yogurt. It's a yogurt cheese. You can take any type of Greek yogurt. If it's a full fat Greek yogurt, it's gonna have a ton more flavor. If it's a non-fat Greek yogurt, it's gonna be more sour, which is fine. Um, you could also just use uh, yogurt that's not strained in a pinch. Um, and you can also use mascarpone. You could use ricotta and schmear it. Um, and you could use cream cheese. The world is your oyster. And our variation that I'll discuss later, you can also use peanut butter but I would just use the vinegar mushrooms versus the mushroom gravy. So we're gonna toast this up. And this recipe makes enough for two really hearty slices um, or four sides of the toast. So what I'm looking at there, if it's gonna be a whole meal, you're gonna put this onto a dinner plate. And we're gonna pile the mushrooms on top that's a fork and knife meal, uh, but it can easily be extended or uh, into a variety more toast. So it doesn't have to be this piling toast. I just happen to really like it myself. So we're just gonna put it in the cast iron and just let it toast up. And then the latte I have here. So again, if you only have non-fat yogurt in your fridge or 2%, uh, that's fine. Just make sure it's not sweetened um, or flavored. And see how it kind of like balls around once it's strained? How long do you strain it for? You can strain it overnight for eight hours. You can strain it for four while you're doing something else out on your counter. It's still food safe to do that for four hours. Um, and this is also a fermented product. Um, you could also strain it for 12. It's gonna get really thick at 12 and become very much like a cheese. Uh, what I recommend doing though, when you're doing labne, is to do a whole container and then use it for a variety of things. I'm gonna push my mushrooms around. What are a variety of things that you can do with labne? Well, it's a schmear, right? So it's a schmear for toast, it's a topping for soup, it's a dollop on top of a salad. Um, you can have it with lentils, you can have it with lentils and a poached egg. Uh, labne is a great, all-purpose thing. I also put it in some of my recipes for dessert. So I'll take some cream and whip it and fold in labne and honey. And all of a sudden I have a filling for a tart or I have a great dip for fruit um, that's, that's light and flavorful. So we're just moving this around and it's got a lot of color. I'm gonna bring this up to you guys to show you. Make sure this is not wet. My little damp, so I'm being, I'm risking it for you. Okay. See how it's cooking down? Oh, my stovetop is wild over there. I think my thing is off center. Okay. We'll just let it go. Hopefully, the alarm doesn't go off. All right. And as it cooks down, and it's got all of this color, we're gonna take vegetable stock. If you don't have vegetable stock, you can use chicken. You could use beef if you want. You could use water. Um, if you use water, you might need to season it a little bit more, but this is unsalted. Um, you just might need to season it with like a little more lemon juice. So we're gonna add uh, two thirds of a cup 
of the bed stock. And you do want your heat up for this, right? Because you want this to pull up any bits on the bottom. Okay, the caramelization, that's where a lot of the flavor is. So you want it to reduce down a bit. I don't have to shout now, but it's a little quieter in here. So we're gonna reduce it down. And then we're gonna add a little bit of lemon at the end. Why? Because the acid will help bring out the flavor. Just a teaspoon. So we're gonna let it simmer away for a second. I'm gonna check on my toast. It's getting nice and toasty. Um, I store my bread sliced in the freezer uh, because I don't, if, unless you are having toast every morning, which is great, or you have a family and you're just rolling through bread, it's great to have in the freezer. Even if you buy a sourdough loaf, you can keep half out and then slice the rest and put it in the freezer and you can have it in a pinch. Um, if not, it will just always turn into breadcrumbs. Just make sure when you freeze your bread that you slice it first. Um, I don't recommend uh, freezing an entire loaf unless you plan on thawing the entire loaf uh, and eating it, right? Because once it's thawed, you don't want to refreeze it again. If you happen to throw that sourdough bowl into the freezer and you're like, oh, well, I didn't, I didn't know that, um, no problem. Uh, I would just pull it out, let it sit on the counter for 30 minutes. Yeah, 30 minutes. And then you want to put it into a... No, let it sit on the counter, excuse me, for 15 minutes. And then you want to put it in like a 350, 360 degree oven for a half hour, uh, wrapped in foil, and it'll be good as new. So this is nice and toasty. I'm going to check my mushrooms. These vinegar mushrooms are, I love, I love sharp flavors. Um, so I really, really love these. All right. So we've got our bread, we toast it up. Okay, I really did toast it, I didn't fake it. I'm gonna turn this off. And we are going to add a teaspoon of lemon juice. If you've got your lemon, I think everybody knows this trick. You just roll it on the counter like this. It helps break up the inside. I'm a big fan of lemon zest. You don't really need lemon zest for this, um, but try and, um, you're only using a teaspoon, so try and like save it so that you can zest it for your salad tonight. It's a good trick. Okay. So we're gonna add a teaspoon of lemon juice. Do you need to measure it? You're welcome to. Uh, teaspoon right here. But you can also just eye it. And the more you, you eye things like that, that if this is not baking, it's not gonna make it fail. Uh, the more you kind of understand what a tablespoon or a teaspoon is. But if you're feeling uncomfortable, have these out. They're your friend. Okay. So we just season that. And it's got, it's reduced down a bit. It's got this great gravy. Holy smokes. So if you guys are ready, I'm going to take a pause before I finish this toast, because we'll finish both at the same time, okay? I'm gonna put my toast over here, and let's talk about what we can do with these mushrooms, don't mind me and my notes, that's not the top toast, or not just eating vinegar mushrooms out of a bowl. So first of all, the vinegar mushrooms are great as like a tapas thing, so just, actually having them as part of an appetizer board. Um, they're killer with hunks of cheese um, and your glass of wine, right? As you're hopefully having a little bit more aperitivo these days, um, enjoy your life. Don't feel like you're stuck at home. You, you, don't, you, can, you can enjoy it um, and have a great conversation and some vinegar mushrooms. So besides that, and besides making the mushroom toast, there are other things I like to do. So the vinegar mushrooms have a sharp, flavor. So things that help balance out the sharp flavor, as I mentioned, peanut butter. Um, if you don't like peanut butter or you're allergic to it or you get inflammation from it, you can use almond butter, but there's something about the flavor. This is really good natural peanut butter. Uh, this is maranatha. Um, it's two ingredients. So this one has salt in it. You can get it unsalted, but it doesn't have added oil. I don't usually get peanut butter with added oil. You can the self grinders are closed at the stores right now. 
Um, but when they reopen, you can also self grind your peanut butter. So peanut butter, you can cook rice noodles, have them cold or hot, um, or any other noodle you want, but rice noodles really great with this. And then just throw in two tablespoons of this, some chopped up parsley or cilantro, some scallions. I happen to have a scallion city going on right now. So when you buy your scallions, especially right now, and usually a recipe needs like one scallion and then you've got waste and then they get gross in the fridge, just throw them in water and you can leave them out at room temperature. And what happens is they actually sprout and they grow. So just like if you've ever deadheaded a hydrangea, where you kind of knock the dead ones off and then the new ones grow, if you're seeing them get gross, just deadhead your scallions, okay? So you're gonna chop up some scallions and you take two tablespoons of peanut butter into your rice noodles and then you wanna add your roasted vinegar mushrooms. It's an awesome, 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 delicious, delicious meal. So you have the fresh herbs, whether it's cilantro, scallion, uh, the rice noodles with peanut butter and the vinegar mushroom. Uh, also, um, I love to take this toast and this is very good, believe me, I trust me on this one. So you take the peanut butter again and you're gonna smear it on here and then you're gonna put your vinegar mushrooms on top. That it's, it's abs I don't know how else to say, it's an absolute delicious treat. Um, you could have it as an easy breakfast, you could have it as a, a lazy dinner where you're just like, I don't feel like eating. A snack in the afternoon, um, don't judge yourself if you don't wanna sit down to, you know, uh, a well-portioned plate every night. I, I won't judge you. Uh, what else? Uh, grilled Caesar steak salad. So I have in here, I, I always keep um, lots of different lettuces, uh, especially you know, bulk it up. But you just take a romaine spear and you want to just cut the spear into quarters or a half, throw it cut side up underneath the broiler to get a touch of char. Uh, spoon the vinegar mushrooms on top, and then you can have it with steak, chicken, shrimp, an egg, solo, tofu, whatever you want, beans, um, and then either homemade Caesar dressing or vegan or regular, or you can buy Caesar dressing. Uh, we'll send you actually a recipe for Caesar dressing. I have a vegan one, and then I have an easy one as well. Um, I always keep anchovy paste around, so that's a, a necessary thing for a non-vegan Caesar dressing. Uh, what else? So uh, mu mushroom walnut tapenade. Now, you don't wanna use the mushroom gravy for this because these are great, it's not as sharp in flavor, but you do wanna use the vinegar mushroom. So if you take toasted walnuts, okay, Castle Vitrano, Kalamata, whatever olives you like, and you chop them up with the roasted vinegar mushrooms, you have an amazing tapenade. What can you do with tapenade? It's often served on crostinis, uh, which are the small little toasts, lots of bread here, um, but you can just eat it itself. You can put tapenade in uh, endive, uh, spears so the belgian endive that is sometimes cut this way or it's done in the spears those are great little boats you can use uh your romaine lettuce here and make romaine little lettuce cups or wraps butter lettuce cups or wraps for the tapenade but it makes an amazing amazing tapenade and this is stuff that you probably have in your pantry which is why it's pulled out here uh, another great thing to add into your tapenade if you want to season it or touches of mustard or a touch of hot sauce, okay? These are great in the peanut noodles as well. So this is an organic sriracha. It doesn't have sugar added to it. Yellow bird, if everyone can see. Um, it's sweetened with dates and raisins. So this is a great thing. All right, let's talk about mushroom gravy and then we'll pull. These are almost ready. Ow, okay. Mushroom gravy, so this is a creamier version of our, our mushrooms done in a cast iron skillet. Beef stroganoff, I know that sounds so random, like why would I eat beef stroganoff? But if you eat beef, you can easily sear uh, beef, it doesn't have to be beef that you slow cook overnight. Uh, sear, chop it up, um, uh, slice it up, let it rest, slice it up, and you just add it into here um, and just let it kind of stew together quickly. This is super quick. 
And then you want to add a little bit of fresh herbs. So the parsley that goes into our roasted vinegar mushrooms, I might add a little handful of parsley and eat it with egg noodles or gluten-free noodles too. Um, I also love to make a pasta with this. So this is chickpea spaghetti. Um, I'm not allergic to gluten, so I, I do whatever I want to do. Um, good spaghetti. Uh, I would, you can use fresh pasta. It's just, it's not as hearty. Um, it's a softer bite. It's still delicious with this, um, but I tend to use a macaroni product, whether it's gluten-free like this one. So I'm just gonna boil this in salted water. And then I'm gonna take some pine nuts, okay? Toasted pine nuts. And I'm gonna take my mushroom gravy and some fresh herbs like parsley. And I'm gonna take these in a pan. I'm gonna add the pine nuts in. And then the, when the pasta is done, I'm going to take it out, al dente, right? So it's still got a little tooth to it. It could suck up a little bit more liquid. I'm gonna throw it in my pan. It's gonna suck up some of that gravy. And I have an incredibly delicious meal. What kind of cheese can you put on it? Well, we're using the manchego, which is right here for the toast. Uh, but if you have pecorino, uh, that's delicious. That's a sheep's milk cheese or Parmesan. Uh, whatever hard grating cheese is appropriate for that. Uh, all right, what else can you do? You can make a cabbage salad. This sounds funny, but cabbage is a great thing to have in your fridge because it will just last forever. Um, if you slice up your cabbage, cabbage salad is not a sad salad. I, I think, has anybody ever been to, hopefully, uh, to Isodi? So Isodi has a great salad with a ton of cabbage um, in it on the menu. Um, it's, it's so good. So you take the mushrooms and you're just gonna slice up the cabbage like so. I would add in some herbs to it, some cheese, some other lettuces that I have around. So maybe I'm taking, you know, some of these and some parsley and some scallions, just lots of flavor. And then I'm gonna add in the warm mushroom gravy and maybe a little drizzle more of olive oil and lemon juice. And I have a very, very, very good salad. And it's hearty and it's technically light, right? But this is just heartier. So we've got that that I'm gonna now transfer over here so I don't have a mess. Uh, what else? Soft scrambled eggs. So always cook your eggs and before they seem like they're done. And then your, why? Because really dried eggs are not delicious. I just threw, a cabbage leaf. Um, and then right when they're just about done, you're gonna add a really big heaping spoonful. So like that much of your eggs straight into the top of the soft scrambled egg. And you have this really like unctuous, delicious um, breakfast or brunch. If you're doing it large format for a ton of people, what you would do is you cook your um, eggs separately in another pan. Turn them off when they seem like they're not even done. You really don't want dried eggs. You take a cast iron pan like this of the eggs and then you would just spoon the gravy on top um, and have lots of toasts on the side or whatever would have you to make um, their egg, scrambled egg and mushroom top toasts. Um, whether that's for two people, four people, or I don't, unless your household's bustling right now, you might not have uh, eight to 10 people in there. Um, and then finally, chicken pot pie. Uh, so chicken pot pie is something that gets a bad rap because it would be not good for you. Um, but in the sense that it's like very calorie dense, um, which is fine as a treat, but you know, uh, I like to the right way lighten things up. So if you just uh, take some leftover chicken, roasted, grilled, whatever, and you shred it up, um, add in additional veggies, um, cook them if they're, if they're uh, raw. So if something like cauliflower, steam it quickly. Or if it's frozen broccoli, it's already cooked. Um, if it's frozen peas, they're already cooked. And you're just gonna add them in here. Just warm it for it to come together. You could add a spoonful of the lavne to make a creamy uh, feeling to it. And that's it. If you wanna have a biscuit with it so that you have the biscuit topping, great. Um, if you have puff pastry in your freezer, you could throw some puff pastry over the top and bake it off. Um, but that's a really easy chicken pot pie um, that's very nourishing. It's just, it's not full of 
roux, which is the butter and the flour, or a ton of milk and a ton of cream. Uh, both are good as we're going the, the clean route. Okay, so let's uh, take these mushrooms out. Does anybody have any questions before I, we have the grand reveal of the mushrooms? All right. So we're going to do, we're going to make a, our quick salad with this one. Why not? We're here. Give it to my doorman. Okay. So we've got this beautiful romaine. This is really how easy it is. And we're going to take the vinegar mushrooms out of the oven. Turn my oven off and see how much color they have. It smells amazing in here. So delightful. And they're good to go with a little bit of parsley. So you always want to add the parsley at the end because when the heat hits it, it will brighten everything up. Uh, parsley gets a bad wrap, it shouldn't. So I have my parsley also sitting. This is how herbs last longer. So it's just sitting in water. I'll change the water, but it acts like a plant um, versus it getting gross and lost in the bottom of my produce drawer. So I'll just take it. I had already washed it when I got home from the store the other day. We're gonna take a half a cup of parsley. We're just gonna rough chop it like so. And then we're gonna take it and go right over the top of these mushrooms. You could put this straight down on your table as a showpiece if you wanted to, or you can store it in the fridge and use it all week. So that's what it looks like. And then I'm just gonna take it and I'm just gonna dress this really simply with some olive oil. Some pine nut, okay, this is the meal, and some of the sherry vinegar, I think. I really like that flavor. Maybe I'll season it with a little more lettuce with salt and pepper. Oh, there it is, okay. And then I'm going to take these, and I really don't want to use a tiny spoon. And I'm going to take this spoon. And we're going to take, you just want to discard the time stems. Okay. Don't want to serve anybody those time stems. Won't hurt them, but they won't like it. Okay. And then you're going to take that and you're just going to go over the top, and all the vinegary juices are going to run down into your romaine. So that's one use for your roasted vinegar mushrooms, okay? You put that off to the side. Maybe I'll take a photo of it. And then let's do, let's talk toast, let's talk gravy. So we've got our toast here, everybody can see. And I'm gonna take my toast. I'm gonna have it as like a center plate meal. I'm gonna take my labne. You don't need a lot. You could use a lot if you want, but you don't need a lot. I'm going to smear it. I'm very good at smearing. Okay. And then I'm going to take this mushroom gravy. I'm not going to burn myself. This is also really delicious with a fried egg or a poached egg on top, too. I love to serve this with a steak knife. I'm going to take the mushrooms. And I want some of the juice. Why? Because the juice is going to soak into that bread. This is not really a pickup toast. This is an eat on a plate toast. Okay. Yum. And then manchego. A little goes a long way. It's a pretty strong cheese. You can get a three month at manchego, or you can get a very aged manchego, like six months, 12 months, whatever you like. This is a six month and you're just gonna shave it over the top. Can you use a microplane? Sure. 
I'm just using a veggie peeler. Because the thing about an HG is they have a lot of flavor, so you don't need to use a ton. If you want to use a ton, by all means. But doing the thin slices allows you to feel like you're having more, okay? And that is the mushroom toast. <laughs>